So here's my first question. You're, uh, you're, the, you're elected chairman of the RNC. Of course, you're out in the country raising money, working with donors, but you're also here in D.C. on the inside of a lot of these insider conversations. And one of our more, we won't name any names, but one of our more libertarian brothers in the GOP comes up to you and says, why should we be involved in this marriage issue at all? Right? What, what's the best case? You've got two minutes which, or less, 30 seconds. What's the case you make for why this is an important issue? It, it's an important issue because I, I believe that marriage is, is, is a gift from God and, it's a, and the sanctity of marriage ought to be protected. And there are certain legal uh, definitions that uh, are not just legal and not just protected by our Constitution, but they're also uh, protected by uh, the sanctity of marriage given to us by God. And I don't believe that the comedy clause in the Constitution allows for activist judges to uh, redefine what marriage is. I believe that that's why a majority of states uh, certainly agree that marriage needs to be between one man, one woman. That's what we've done in Wisconsin. I was a part of that. I was helpful to make sure that that happened. Uh, I was helpful to our Attorney General to make sure that that's happened. Uh, I believe it's important. I believe the Defense of Marriage Act is, is, is important. Uh, and I think that um, it's something that certainly as Chairman of the Republican National Committee, uh, we ought to be committed to. Our platform is strong in that area. I think if anyone reads our platform on marriage, uh, certainly I, I think that the Republican Party has hit on all cylinders on that issue, and I have no beef with any part of that platform that's set forth uh, within the Republican National Committee. I just want to clarify, when you said comedy clause, I heard comedy clause. I was wondering, but just for... Sorry. That's the <laughs> I'm sorry. So full, a better way to... Clause, not comedy it's clause. also called the full, full faith and credit clause. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so he follows up and he says, what's the harm of gay marriage? What's your short answer? Uh, well, I think because because I think it's defined because I think marriage is defined by, by, by to be uh, between one man and one woman, and the harm is I think that children uh, are better off with a mom and a dad. Uh, I certainly admire single parents. I know it's tough, uh, but at the end of the day, I think a mom and a dad are important to a child's life. I mean, I have two kids, and I think both my wife and I provide different types of nurturing to our children. I think that's really important. I think that's what God intended, and that's what I believe, and that's what I would adhere to if I were to be chairman of the National Party. That's what I've adhered to as chairman of the Republican National, I mean, excuse me, chairman of the Republican Party of Wisconsin. Um, well, thank you. And, of course, Wisconsin did pass a marriage amendment in 2006 by 60 to 40 percent margin. So you're probably very aware. One of the things we're struck by is because our victories aren't kind of relayed or magnified in the press, even on Fox News, uh, many, even insider politicians, seem to be unaware of the unbroken string of victories uh, on the marriage issue, that more than 80% of uh, Republicans strong, strongly support the current definition of marriage. Um, the last election cycle saw the beginning of an emergence of a kind of pro-gay marriage, fiscally conservative candidacies, D.B. Scozafaba, Bill Binney, Tom Campbell, and they were all re soundly rejected by the GOP primary voters. And, you know, not only in, in uh, red states, but in r relatively blue or purplish states like Wisconsin and Maine and California, voters again and again reject same-sex marriage. But there seems to be a sense in Washington that we, what we hear from candidates is the RNC or other organizations like that are actively discouraging candidates from making their position on marriage known, uh, mentioning it on the website. I mean, we do understand that this is not going to be the top line issue. We're not asking people <coughs> to make this their biggest advertising budget. But it is striking, given its unbroken record of success, how many Republican candidates are just not making a distinction clear. And I'm wondering whether you at the RNC would, uh, whether, uh, whether you would continue that policy or whether you would encourage candidates in many places to, to draw a distinction on the marriage issue and make it part of their package. Well, I don't, I, I don't think that that's actually part of a policy at the RNC at all, but I think individual candidates make choices and, and what they think is going to move voters. But personally, certainly if it's an issue that a candidate feels strongly about or if it's an issue that voters want to know about, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't 
state your position. You're right. A majority of states, an overwhelming majority of states have already passed these amendments because that's what people want. I'm sitting here in, in Wisconsin. I can guarantee you that even though uh, many times we're a blue state, in fact, we flipped almost everything red this past year. But, um, a lot of those blue, formerly blue <laughs> states did, right. yes. But, Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you. But our the people here believe that marriage ought to be between one man and, and one woman. I mean, we had to go through a constitutional amendment to, to say that, even though our current law was that marriage w was between a husband and a wife. But we were, we were fighting over what a husband and wife was, so we had to pass an amendment to say it was a man and a woman. I mean, these are the fights that are going on in America. And I think the bigger issue here isn't really what individual candidates want to do. I think our bigger challenge is we've got courts that are out of control. We've got judges that are legislating. We have uh, judges in different states that want to use that full faith and credit clause to impose their will on the rest of the country. And that's not what, our, that's not what the founders of this country intended. That's certainly not what I think God intended. And um, it's certainly not what I individually uh, believe and would intend to do if I were to be elected chairman of the party. Well, thank you.